Hey guys, James Martinez here from All Things Digital. And in today's video, what I wanted to share with you guys is actually a presentation I did in a group called the Success Strategies Group. This is a uh, Facebook group run by a woman named Sheila Skullnick. Now, Sheila is a very, very successful entrepreneur, and she had seen um, some other presentations I did in other Facebook groups. And in turn, she asked me if I was uh, interested in speaking for her group. So I actually uh, went and put together this presentation. The presentation discusses Google ads and Facebook ads and how they're similar and how they're different and how you can apply them in your business. So, um, you know, my opinion, I think it's a pretty thorough presentation. I think it's very, very helpful. Um, I hope you do as well. Uh, so I will be, re I will be redoing this presentation a little bit. There's some stuff I want to tweak. And also I had a, uh, a situation going on with some poison ivy, which was pretty funny. So, uh, that's another reason I want to redo it. But um, other than that, I still think it's a very, very valuable presentation. I think, uh, you know, you can learn a lot about the difference between the two ad platforms, Facebook versus Google. And um, if you do have any questions in regards to the content, please feel free to visit my website at atdny.com. That stands for All Things Digital New York. And um, on my website there, you could download checklists that help you to run your own Facebook and Google ads. And you can also schedule a free call with me, a free you know uh, strategy uh, session with me, so that we can discuss your business and how. Facebook ads, Google ads, uh, websites, and even five-star reviews for your business can help your business to grow. So uh, I hope you enjoy the presentation and feel free to reach out if you have any questions uh, via Facebook or at my website, atdny.com. And I hope you guys enjoy. I'll speak to you soon. You know, one of the things that uh, I think uh, that over the, over the past six months we've become kind of famous for is, is having special guests on our show. As you know, even though Sheila and well myself, uh, Sheila, can you uh, can you mute everybody? Can you hit mute all? Everyone, mute yourself. Okay. Anyway, uh, you know, as we have come on, who are really truly experts in their field, and they give us insights and knowledge, and we've had great response to our our list of experts. Uh, we we it takes us a while. Uh, to get these people on. We've had internationally known people here. We've had nationally known people here. We've had... Michael, we can't hear you. I muted him. He said mute all. He was part of the all. Okay, there we go. Anyway, so to make a long story short, uh, we have a, a really great special guest for us, and uh, we're going to let him explain the, the why, why he looks the way he looks this morning. And uh, <laughs> uh, his, his name, yeah, James Martinez is our special guest, and uh, James is uh, the owner of All Things Digital. And he has got a, a just a, he's really good at a lot of different things. And he's going to give us some insights into specific areas that all of you as independent business people can use. So get your notebook on, get your, get your uh, pencils ready and make sure you take notes because he's going to give you a lot of good stuff. Right, James? I certainly hope so. <laughs> Thank you for the uh, intro, Michael. And I just want to say thanks to Sheila for having me. Uh, very excited to, you know, meet, meet everybody here. And uh, thank you for your time this Monday morning. So in regards to my appearance, this is not my uh, attempt to feel like a rock and roll star in a Zoom meeting. Um, one of my neighbors apparently doesn't uh, take to maintaining their property too well. And so uh, this past weekend, I was, I was, getting rid of some overgrowth from their yard. And yes, I could have hired someone, but I, I said, let me just get this done. And this eye is completely swollen this morning. This, this eye swollen shut. And this one's about 50%. So these glasses are for your benefit, not mine. <laughs> um, but what we're going to discuss today is uh, I wanted to just, you know, I, I talk about a lot of different things. My, you know, I like to manage um, six or seven different things, which includes Facebook ads, Google ads, website design, online reputation management, <clears throat> and other things for small to medium businesses. So, um, 
I've been doing lots of presentations in regards to one ad platform or the other. And, you know, there, there's two big questions that always come up for me uh, or, or that I always get asked. And so I said, you know, why not? Um, this will be the first time really putting a presentation together for a group where I discuss the answer to these two questions. Or should I say my opinion? Because uh, it might, you know, it, it's, it's an opinion. I don't think there's no right or wrong. There's only a test and see what your results are. Right. So uh, what I wanted to discuss with you guys today is, is um, you know, traditional versus digital marketing. Right. Uh, which you've probably you know, gotten your, your uh, feet wet in uh, both, so to speak. And then also discuss uh, particular ad platforms that I like and which, you know, which, which you should choose uh, depending upon what kind of business you are. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. Give me just a minute. Make sure we're all uh, firing on all cylinders. Okay. And... Can I get a uh, thumbs up from Sheila if, if uh, she's seeing my presentation screen there? Okay, excellent. Awesome, thank you, thank you. Great, so uh, as mentioned, uh, this presentation is called Let's Get Digital, and my name is James Martinez of All Things Digital. Um, so me personally, I, I, I've, I love digital marketing. Um, you know, I'm definitely a computer junkie. I've been on a computer forever. Um, you know, since uh, the first time I came into, you know, my living room at my house and my father had all sorts of pop-up windows open on his computer and he looked at me like a deer in headlights and said, JR, I don't know what's going on here. Can you help me? And so I sat down, tried figuring some stuff out. And then uh, after that, it kind of took off because then it was the days of AOL and, you know, uh, hand coding HTML websites. I remember my first web page I hand coded took me, I think it was about seven to eight days. And it was a one page site with two two graphics and an email box and it was pretty ridiculous. So that's grown into a love for digital marketing websites and all of these things that are that are encompassing in there. So the first thing I wanted to discuss is digital or traditional, right? It's, it's a big question that I'm often asked and so, uh, so I wanted to just briefly discuss uh, the two. So um, before we decide on what's best for you, I'd like to discuss both. So traditional marketing advantages, right? Uh, traditional marketing has very, very high impact, okay? Uh, you know, television, television ads, brochures, magazines, radio, you know, even mailings and stuff like that. It just makes a great impression. It's really tough to ignore, um, you know, that tangible piece of uh, marketing or that commercial. Um, you know, traditional marketing also can be everlasting, right? So in regards to print products, they keep on advertising for you after they're initial impression, right? You paid for the print, you did the run, and now that, that, that you know, that mailing is, is out there forever until people decide that they're going to toss it. But if it's a great piece of advertising, it can, it can be uh, everlasting. And then it's, it's, again, that grand impression, right? Um, when you do television ads, when you do, you know, print marketing and stuff of that nature, it really gives people that impression of, wow, this is a really, you know, really big, well-established business. So I think those are some of the great advantages of traditional marketing. Now, of course, there's disadvantages. Um, you know, television ads, radio ads, print products, you know, this stuff can be very, very expensive, right? So, um, you know, smaller to medium businesses may have a tough time, uh, you know, getting started with this sort of uh, marketing right? Um, measurability is also another, uh, you know, it's, it's tough to gauge the impact of these traditional marketing dollars. Whereas, um, you know, people may say, you know, your, your ads are going to reach X amount of people or your, you know, you know, this magazine goes out to X amount of people. Just because it goes out to X amount of people don't, doesn't mean X amount of people are actually going to see it, right? And the other thing with, with uh, some traditional marketing is that there's not a lot of interaction, right? It's, it's somewhat a one-way method where it's, you put the content out there, you send the, the, the ad out in the magazine, you put the TV ad out there, and it's they either call or they don't, and that's kind of the end of the road, so, so to speak, as long until you do uh, another set of ads and stuff like that. So looking at digital marketing, you know, in my opinion, it's a very high engagement, uh, you know, sort of uh, marketing, right? Um, most digital marketing campaigns naturally create what I like to call a micro conversion because they force an interaction, okay? So whenever you see any sort of ads on the internet, on Google, on Facebook, whatever, there, there's always a call to action, a, you know, click to learn more, a click here to download now. There, there's always some sort of engagement, generally speaking, that kind of uh, begins 
envisions your customer going down sort of, uh, you know, stepping into your world and getting involved with your business. So that engagement is important no matter how little any engagement with your business is a good engagement because you need several marketing touch points before they become a customer, as they say. The other great thing is data, right? With all digital marketing solutions, you will generally, uh, as long as you, either you're doing it or your provider is doing it correctly, you're going to get some measurable results. You're going to get data. You're going to know how many people saw it, um, literally saw it, not how many people it was, you know, sent to or whatnot. You're also going to see how many people potentially clicked on the ad, and then you can also see how many pe people turned into a lead, how many phone calls you generated. So that data is is very 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 critical to the success of a marketing campaign. And another thing with digital marketing is that it's highly targeted, right? When you work with, um, you know, television ads or radio ads or, or print products, and you don't always know that it may be going to a certain niche of people, but you can't really hyper niche down where you're literally speaking to each person, right? And with digital marketing, you, you know, if you really do things right, you can really drill down, to, you know, to that person and really make it a, a personal marketing campaign. So that's some of the stuff I love. There's also disadvantages, um, you know, with digital marketing, it can feel a bit intrusive at times, right? Once you've been exposed to a brand or company, you may begin to get overwhelmed by their omnipresence, right? So omnipresence is, you know, if, if you see them on Facebook, you also see them on websites, you see them in your email account, you see them, um, you know, you open up your app on your phone, you see them there. At, at, so, at some point, it can become a bit intrusive and it can have almost a negative effect, right? Right. The other uh, disadvantage is that it's constantly evolving, okay? As social media platforms evolve or lose or gain popularity, their ad standards will change as well. Their audience will change. So sometimes it's kind of difficult to keep current on standards, the best standards and practices for that uh, platform. Another thing is short-term traction, okay? So, you know, with digital marketing, you're competing, uh, you know, for, with Facebook, you're competing with websites, you're competing with YouTube. So, um, you know, your, your advertising really needs to make an incredible impact to, to have, uh, to really get some traction going because, you know, as people are sliding through their phones or doing whatever they're doing, your ad can come and go and be forgotten in seconds. That's why you really need to have some great marketing to get uh, better long-term traction. So now you may be asking, well, all right, which way should I go? Both have benefits and both have cons, right? So in my opinion, digital marketing is not a replacement for traditional marketing methods. It should be supplemental if possible, okay? However, for some small to medium businesses, if there's an only one or the other necessity because of budget or because of time constraints, then I always recommend going digital. So when we talk about digital marketing, um, it's not just advertising. There's lots of different things you could do. You could do social media marketing. Um, you can do, uh, which is, you know, posting to your Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You could do content marketing where you're putting out articles and, and content to, to potentially uh, drive audience to your uh, business. Um, search engine optimization, obviously making sure your website stands out on the search engines. Um, doing Google pay-per-click ads. Obviously, you know, people, you, you can pay to have uh, to be on the top of Google. You can do Facebook ads where you're buying digital real estate in someone's Facebook news feed, as well as, you know, uh, millions of other locations. You can do affiliate marketing where you have other people kind of become part of your tribe and start pushing your product with and for you. You could do email marketing and there's many, many more options with digital marketing, right? So what I wanted to focus on today is the two that I love most, okay? I love Facebook ads and I love Google ads. And, um, you know, the, the, they, they, the thing that I hear often is that, you know, what's the difference? Which should I choose? Okay. So, um, so my, my response to that is there's, there's kind of several questions you could ask about each, but before we go into that, 
I'm sorry, my presentation is being weird here. So both of these are paid strategies, okay? Um, Facebook ads is paid and Google ads are paid, okay? So um, social media marketing may be free where you're just posting to your Facebook account and stuff like that. Um, Whereas Facebook ads and Google ads, you're paying for placement. You're paying for clicks. You're paying for engagement, okay? And the reason why I prefer to work with Facebook and Google ads is because you can generally get results faster, okay? Because you're putting money behind your campaigns. So I want to briefly discuss Google ads. Um, So, you know, online ads can increase brand awareness by 80%. Okay. So that's a huge number. Um, 63,000 searches get processed by Google every second. Okay. So some of those searches may be speaking to your product or brand. Now, 90% of desktop searches happen on Google. Um, 76% of the search engine market belongs to Google. 73% of the paid search market share belongs to Google. Um, 65% of small to mid-sized businesses have a pay-per-click campaign. And 35% of users will purchase a product within five days of searching for it on Google. So those are some pretty impressive numbers, obviously. So what are Google ads? Um, In my opinion, I like to call Google ads intent marketing, okay? And the reason why I say that is people will typically go to Google determined to find a solution to their problem, okay? And if your product or service is a solution to their problem, it's great to appear in the search results. So an example, let's say I'm looking for some stylish clogs, right? I want some stylish footwear. If I do a search for stylish clogs, guess what? Google will immediately show me where I can buy some fancy footwear. These are, um, you know, shopping ads on Google. And then below you could see here, this ad is for a website, which is probably one of these advertisers as well. But you could see here, this is the top half of the Google results. And guess what? 60% of the top of page one, or I'd say probably closer to 80% is advertising, right? So you can see here the little sponsored, uh, little sponsored notation here and the little ad there. So someone searches for their, their need and Google gives them the answer, okay? Another one, an example, a service, right? The last one was a product. This is a service. I need a plumber. So I do a search for plumber near me. So Google immediately will show me certified listings, okay? Um, and again, you see sponsored listings here. These are for plumbers in the area. And then again, you'll see more ads, ads. Um, and even Even in the map listings, there'll be ads. So, you know, Google offers guaranteed vendors as well as many other ads when you're searching for a a solution to your problem. So, you might be saying to yourself, well, how can I use Google ads? Okay, so what I want to do today is literally share with you guys um, my strategy on creating a Google ad. I'm not going to go too deep into it so that your eyes glaze over, but I like to give you an overview so that you understand how they work, how they can work for you. And if you are going to potentially work with, uh, do it for yourself or work with a vendor, you understand somewhat the basic process, okay? So my process, in my opinion, is fairly easy, okay? I, I create what I like to call an account hierarchy, okay? So if you begin, begin at the top, you have your account, okay? Below your account, you'll have campaigns, okay? Several campaigns. Within your campaigns, you'll have ad groups, okay? And these all ad groups are particular, um, you know, ways that are relating to your campaign. And then in your ad groups, you'll have ads, keywords, and landing pages, okay? So these are like the the, the big major components here of uh, Google ad uh, account structure, in my opinion. So let's take it a little further. Let's look at an actual example. Okay. So I do uh, Google ads for martial arts schools. Okay. So here is a sample of my martial arts school campaigns. Okay. So we have our account. Okay. And then I break the martial arts out into the services they offer. So you could see here, I have a a campaign for karate classes. Okay. And then uh, I have a campaign for kickboxing classes. Okay. And now below karate classes, I have ad groups such as karate near me. If someone searches for karate near me, I want the ads to show up in this ad group. And if they search for kids karate or kickboxing classes, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the hierarchy of the account. Okay. This is how I make it so that I can quickly see which campaigns are winners and which campaigns may be losers and need more work. 
So uh, as mentioned, the, the campaign is Karate Classes, and the ad groups were Karate Near Me and Kids Karate. So let's take an even closer look now, okay? So now we're looking underneath the ad group, okay? So within your ad group, you're gonna have keywords, ads, and your landing pages, right? Um, so in my Karate Near Me ad group, guess what's a great keyword to have in that ad group? If someone searches for Karate Near Me, I want it to show within the Karate Near Me ad group. And other similar searches can be like nearest karate school, local karate classes. And it's really about having the keywords match the idea of the ad group, right? So it's kind of congruent, okay? Um, and then the ads should also speak to the ad group. So if someone searches for karate near me, wouldn't it be fantastic if they saw an ad that says best karate near you? That kind of speaks to the search, don't you think? And then it could say, find the best adult and kids karate in your area, and then click for a special offer. And I put that there intentionally. You always want to have an actual offer, right? Um, so, you know, if you just say, we're the best, come see us, that's not really an offer. But saying, you know, get a free month of martial arts classes or, you know, uh, six months at 50% off, now that's an actual offer. Um, and then you have your landing page. And obviously, it's no coincidence that, you know, it, it, you should have the landing page go to the, the uh, page that matches your campaign and ad group. So, my, uh, mysite.com, your karate school, and it would be, uh, the page would be about karate. Lots of people will send their ads to the home page, and it's kind of like saying, hey, you know, you already told me what you want, but I don't want to get you right there. I want to make you work a little bit harder for it, which doesn't make sense to me. You want to always drive them to exactly what they're searching for. So here's like a real world example, okay? So if someone does a search for karate near me, okay? And then they see this ad, best karate near you, okay? Kids and adults feel safer, improve fitness, right? And then again, mysite.com slash karate school. If you were a karate school owner or whatever your service or business is, it should remain congruent, okay? Um, and then once they click on this ad, hopefully, right? Because it matches the search, then they'll go to that page on their website that literally speaks about karate classes. I think it kind of makes sense, that congruency. So, like I said, Google to me is intent marketing, okay? A person was, was determined to find a martial arts school and Google helped them do it. A person is searching for a solution to their problem and hopefully your product or service is the answer to that problem, so Google will help your business be the answer to that search. So now I want to discuss Facebook ads. Um, we'll talk about some quick stats. Facebook has 2.41 billion monthly active users. That's kind of a lot. Facebook is the world's third most visited website, and I believe that's uh, third to uh, Google and YouTube, uh, first and second there. 71%, um, almost three quarter of American adults use Facebook, okay? That's a pretty good number there too. 51% of American teens use Facebook, okay? 74% of high income earners use Facebook, and also 74% of Facebook users log in daily. Facebook users will typically spend at least 38 minutes per day using the platform. So that's almost, uh, almost a good hour. And more than half of American adults will get their news from Facebook, which I thought was a pretty interesting stat as well. So you may be th thinking to yourself, okay, well, if Google is intent-based marketing, what is Facebook considered? I like to consider Facebook ads persuasion marketing, okay? Um, and the reason why I say that is because people are not on Facebook to solve a problem. They're typically looking to see photos, videos, and content from people that they care about or are interested in. So it's up to you to persuade them to be interested in what you have to offer. You know, while they're scrolling through pictures of their nieces and nephews and, and all of this stuff, it's up for you to grab that little piece of real estate, grab that little frame of mind of theirs for that second and make them interested in what you have to offer. 
So an example, I wanted to show you guys an ad, a Facebook ad that worked for me, okay? So I was scrolling through the Facebook feed and when you advertise on Facebook, your audience sees the posts um, that matter to them, but you as a business owner have the opportunity to buy some digital real estate on their feed, okay? As this company Publitio did, I have no idea who this company is, never heard of them before, but they purchased real estate on my Facebook newsfeed. So I saw the ad from them. So you may be surprised to learn that guess what? They put out a great deal, save 90% on this plan. Okay. I had never heard of this company before. They targeted me by my interest. Obviously they, they put in that I was interested in web design or something along those that nature. And guess what? I ended up buying this offer. This Facebook ad worked for them because I was persuaded to purchase their service. So now you may be saying, okay, well, that sounds cool and all, but how can you use Facebook ads? So I wanted to show you, um, you know, a, a quick little overview on a strategy for creating a Facebook ad for yourself, your business. And um, I don't think it's too complex. I think anybody can do this. Uh, obviously, when you get into more advanced Facebook marketing, there's more advanced steps, but in the core, I wanted to show you the core components I feel are necessary for a great Facebook ad. So my process, uh, the components I like to include in my Facebook ads, um, I have four major components that I like to make sure I include, okay? The first is great ad copy. Uh, the second is having a well-formatted post because Facebook ads are basically posts that you put money behind. Then you want a scroll-stopping image or video. You want something that captures their attention and makes them then look towards the copy. And you also want good targeting. You want to target your audience properly and make sure you're getting in front of the right people. So I wanted to show you guys an actual ad that I'm running, okay, right now. So this is a sample of my auto broker campaign. Um, this particular client is uh, called Accuracy Auto Sales and Leasing, and I created this ad for them, and we're doing pretty well. We're running straight lead ads, and we're getting leads for them um, at a fraction of the cost. Actually, in fact, her previous uh, Facebook ad company got her zero results, literally, and, they, and she had spent uh, four times as much as she's currently working with me, so she's ecstatic. But anyway, th th this is a sample of my uh, auto broker campaign, and I want to show you those components components that I mentioned before, okay? So, the critical component one is great ad copy. Now, a lot of people may be looking at this right now and saying, oh my God, who would read all of that? And it's pretty funny because I get that same reaction every time I provide ad copy to my clients. They say, nobody's going to read all of that. And the funny thing is, I A-B test all of my advertising, which means I will create two versions of the ads to see which one gets more leads, which one drives more phone calls, which one drives more clicks. And in my experience, the long form copy always works better than the short form copy. Um, in my opinion, it's a matter of you're either selling in the video or you're selling in the copy. So if you have a short form video, you do long form copy. If you have a long form uh, copy, you do short form video. The other thing is having a well formatted post. As you can see here, it, it, it's a lot of text, but it doesn't necessarily look like a wall of text because I use emojis to break up the content. I use power, you know, new paragraphs, line breaks. I use bolding. Sometimes I use italicized words and I try to make it easy on the eyes. And I also bold the actual important uh, components. Okay. So best deal on a car you actually want. Um, again, a car that you actually want, you can actually actually afford. Um, we're a car broker who helps you. We work for you. It's no coincidence the words that are bolded. $500 towards your down payment. Um, so, you know, formatting your post is very, very important, okay? Um, the next component is a scroll-stopping image or video. So, in this ad, I used a video. 
Um, and it's a pretty simple video. I guess I should have put in a presentation here, but I could share it with the group later. But it's a very, very simple video that only has two or three statements that echo what happens in this uh, copy here. And then you also want smart ad targeting. So you want to make sure, you know, this, this uh, dealership is in Islip. So you want to make sure you're targeting people in that area because she can work. She doesn't necessarily want to work with people in Minnesota. So you want to make sure you're targeting the, the right audience audience when you do your ads. So that's why I say, you know, in my opinion, Facebook is persuasion marketing, okay? You know, the, the, the act of persuading someone to do or believe something, and in, in our case, we want to persuade them to become a lead or make a purchase from our brand, okay? So that's not trademarked. I don't know if other people say that, but that's why I call Facebook ads persuasion marketing. So now you, you may be saying to yourself, okay, that's great. I'm running Facebook ads or I'm running Google ads, but what if they don't convert? Okay, so a conversion is when someone takes the action you want them to take. A conversion, you know, you may consider a conversion a click to your website, okay? And that's, that's, that's okay, that's good. But more importantly, clicks are great, but leads phone calls and purchases are better. So a, a, a call conversion or a web lead conversion is better. But if they don't convert, if this person sees your ad, clicks on your ad and doesn't buy, they don't contact you, they don't become a lead, is all hope lost? The answer is no. You can retarget these people, okay? So with both platforms, you can place specific ads out to those that did not opt in or did not make a purchase, okay? So with retargeting, you can remind your customer about your product or service. You know, hey, you know, I noticed you came and checked out my product, ABC or XYZ, and you didn't purchase. Um, you know, do you want to come back and check it out again? Um, another thing you could do is offer a better incentive to close the deal. Hey, I noticed you checked out my product or my service, um, but you didn't contact us. You know, would it help if we offered you 25% off to get started today? Um, that's another thing you could do. Um, with retargeting, you can also offer additional resources, right? So maybe they didn't convert because the ad didn't give them enough information or the web page didn't give them enough information. So maybe you can offer up a complimentary piece of information to really push them over the edge and make them completely confident in their, their purchase with you or them getting started with you, right? Um, and then another thing you could do is provide social proof and testimonials. If somebody clicks on your ad, whether it be on Google or Facebook, they go to your site, they don't convert. Um, at that point, w why not show them some social proof? You might have it on a page, but you could then show them another ad that shows literally a customer saying, hi, I'm Jane and, and I worked with you know this company and they did a fantastic job for me. Thank you so much. I'm so happy with the service you provided or the product I purchased. So with retargeting, you can um, you know basically put contact these people again and kind of, you know, help, help push the needle with your marketing to them. So an example, I want to show you uh, something that I do on my site, right? A uh, real world, real world example of retargeting. So on my site, uh, atdny.com, if you're on my site looking for, uh, you know, Facebook ad management, I actually have what's called a lead magnet available for free download. So if you, if you're looking at your interested in Facebook ads, um, but you're not really not ready to get started with me, you don't contact me. Um, you know, I offer a lead magnet to, to train you and kind of show you a little bit more about Facebook ads. Okay. So if you don't fill out this form uh, on my site, okay, then, then, you know, you don't convert for me. But if you do fill out this form, you then go to what's called a thank you page, okay? And so then you see this page here, it says thank you, and then it offers for you to have a call with me, right? Um, so, so this is very important in retargeting this thank you page. It's a critical component. So, if people visit uh, the thank you page, like I said, it's a critical component in advertising and retargeting because this is how you can form a fork in the road for your audience, okay? So, you could separate your audience out by people who did visit a thank you page on your site, right? So, if they do visit the thank you page, then I may not want to show them, uh, you know, a retargeting ad. But if they did, if they visited my site but didn't visit the thank you page, that means I didn't convert 
convert them, then I do want to show them a retargeting ad and say, hey, you didn't, you know, you didn't take the action I wanted you to. So, um, come on back and, and take that action, right? So, this is kind of how it works. So, um, they, they visit your site, okay? They don't visit the thank you page, which means they don't convert. And then maybe they leave your site, okay? So, now they're going to go on millions of websites, millions of um, apps and, ad, uh, you know, all sorts of uh, platforms and locations, and they'll see your retargeting ad. And what does that retargeting ad do? It directs them back to your website, okay? And the cycle can start all over again. So, it's a great way to, to reinforce your brand, to keep that conversation open with your potential uh, customer or client, and just keep that circle going until they become a customer. So, an example, here's my retargeting ads. If you visit my site and don't convert, um, you could see here, this is the Merriam-Webster Dictionary website. And I have some pretty ridiculous ads running right now. Um, so, if you didn't download my free checklist, you'll see an ad that says, hey, they're yours for nada. You know, come back and download them, right? And then another one here, what happened? You know, click here to download. So, you know, your messaging should, should remind them of what they were doing, okay? These ads show on thousands of sites. So, here's a health uh, blog website. And here I am again, right? Um, so, I'm literally saying, don't be scared come back and get your free digital marketing checklist today. Download. So, this is an example of my retargeting ad, okay, that you'll see out there in the wild, wild west of the internet. So, I am a musician, uh, but I never made Rolling Stone magazine, but I am successfully on their website with my retargeting ads. So, I say, stop playing around. Come back. Websites to advertising, social media to five-star reviews. Get your checklist now. So, you can see it's pretty, uh, it's pretty exciting to be able to have your ad, your company, your product or service display on rollingstone.com. At least, it impresses me. It's pretty cool. So, like I mentioned, your ads for your business, your brand, your product or service can be on websites, which includes news sites, blogs, shopping sites, etc. It can also be on video sites such as YouTube, Dailymotion, Vivo, Vimeo, Twitch, um, and it can also be shown in mobile apps, games, email apps, photo apps, shopping, productivity apps, um, social media apps, obviously. Um, all of these retargeting ads will be shown in hundreds of thousands if not millions of locations. So, now you may be wondering, well, which platform is best for me, okay? And that's another question that I get asked often, okay? Facebook ads or Google ads, which should I do? So, I have some questions to kind of help you decide that, okay? The first question is, well, what kind of budget do you have, okay? If you have a, a medium to small budget, then you, you probably want more affordable traffic, okay? In my experience, Facebook traffic is generally much more affordable. Um, people are, are more likely to, ah, yeah, I'll click, let me check this out real quick or whatnot. Um, but the difference is, as I discussed before, it's not intent. They don't necessarily have an intent, they may just be clicking it to be willy-nilly and check something out, somewhat of a tire kicker, whereas a person searching on Google is a hot lead, right? They're, or they're a warm lead, a warm prospect, okay? Um, the other question is, what is your objective? If you're looking to drive immediate impact, okay, um, you want sales immediately, you want leads immediately, then you may want to consider Google Ads because somebody searching for the exact product or service you offer may be much more likely than someone else who you're trying to persuade um, to, to, you know, take advantage of your service or offer, right? Another question is, what resources do you have in place, okay? If you don't have um, a lot of time, if you don't have a lot of digital marketing resources such as websites, um, landing pages, um, you know, uh, all sorts of uh, opt-in boxes and stuff like that, and you don't have advanced digital marketing infrastructure, you may opt for the ease of using Facebook ads to get up and running. With Google ads, they can be a bit more complex um, as far far as your strategy and the resources you need to really make them work best for you. So, so, the amount of resources you have in place are a great way to determine which platform is best for you. 
So you may be saying, well, can I use both? And yes, you absolutely can. Okay. So for me, I use both Facebook ads and Google ads. Um, and the way I do it is I try to get more affordable traffic to my website via Facebook. Okay. And then I retarget via Google and Facebook. Okay. Retargeting is, is generally more affordable. Um, but that initial traffic, I like it to be more affordable traffic, right? So that I'm not, you know, bleeding uh, money uh, up front. So I use more affordable traffic from Facebook ads and then I drive them to my website at which point then I retarget on the Google ad network um, and, and the Facebook ad networks. Okay. Now both, all, uh, both of these have search display and video, um, you know, platforms for advertising. So uh, your content gets shared throughout all of those. So I want to ask you, do you think digital marketing can make a huge impact on your business after watching this? Uh, I'm hoping that you're saying yes. Um, so what I wanted to do is let you guys know that if you're interested in getting started with digital marketing, um, I actually have a free Facebook course out there for you guys to take immediately. Um, it's 100% free. You just need an email because it emails you every day the to-do list. Um, but it's a four-part video series. It's called Ads on the Book. It's a free Facebook ads course. And you'll literally develop uh, an ad similar to the ad that I showed you earlier um, you know, on your own. I, I, I walk you through it. So uh, feel free to check that out. It's adsonthebook.com. And, um, you know, I hope you guys, I've been getting a lot of great feedback on it. So hopefully you'll take advantage of that. Uh, so I just want to thank you for your time this morning. Hopefully that wasn't too overwhelming. Again, James Martinez of All Things Digital. My website is atdny.com. And I hope that was useful to you guys. So now I'll stop sharing and uh, I'll answer any questions maybe you guys have. Thank you. Thank you. I, I saw a lot of claps. I didn't hear nothing, but I saw a lot of claps. <laughs> um, who would like to go first with questions? Unmute yourself. And, okay, Daisy, unmute yourself. Hey, thank you. That was very good. I've done a couple of Facebook ads and haven't really gotten anything out of it that I that I know of. May, is it the amount of money I spend on the ad? Should I spend more? You know, I have you know, I, that's, that's a, that's a question I get asked often. Um, and actually that, that auto broker, um, you know, when we had our initial consultation, I, I started looking around in her ad account and, uh, I said, Oh, I said, you know, I, I started looking at some ads that she had actually run herself. And I said, Oh, uh, you know, did, did you do these ads? She's like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't know what the heck I was doing, but I thought I was a Facebook advertising genius. So I just started throwing money at it. Um, and, and the thing is, um, you don't necessarily need to spend more money um, what you really want to spend more of is time creating your campaign. Um, a lot of people will just, I, I, I'm literally seeing ads right now. And the reason why I actually put together that free course is because I, I see ads all the time where people are saying, um, you know, th they'll just put a post, contact us, we're great with a picture of, you know, whatever their product or service is. And it's like, <sighs> Uh, okay, you know, they, they, don't, they didn't take the time to come up with a great advertisement, right? So, if you take the time to um, do se several things, um, first of all, define your objective. Um, if you just put an ad out there with a link to your website, like, oh, you know, um, I, make, I make this, um, click here to check it out. That's not really going to entice somebody to, you know, convert or, or, or check it out or do anything, you know? So what you want to do um, is make sure your ad tells them why, right? So, so if, if you have a product, you may say, um, you know, my product is blah, 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 blah. You know, um, the reason why my product is different from others is because of ABC and XYZ. And, you know, if you purchase my product, you can feel comfortable knowing that I have a warranty or this, a money back guarantee, et cetera, et cetera. And then you also need an offer. A lot of people, you know, saying just contact us, that's not an offer. Saying buy one, get one free is an offer. Saying get 25% off is an offer. Saying, um, you know, purchase today and get a free, you know, consult with me is an offer. So coming up with an offer, coming up with great ad copy, to me, that's where most people just completely miss the mark. So I don't think you need to spend more money. I think you need to really spend more time focusing on what the ad's objective is. What do you want the people to do? And then focus 
more time on the ad copy? How do you speak to these people? Because if, you know, like, for example, that, that ad I was discussing was a contractor, okay? Um, I saw it this morning. It literally said, we do uh, patios, and there was a phone number, okay? Um, if, if I walked up to that person in public, and, and I said, hey, what do you do? And he went, we do patios, I probably would say, this is weird. This is awkward. Um, I'm going to walk away now. But if he said to me, I, I, I've been in the patio business for over 30 years. I've installed, you know, over 2,000 patios on Long Island. Um, I guarantee my patios for, you know, 25 years. And I use the top quality Nikolak pavers. And after your first year, I actually come back and I do a treatment on your patio. And I make sure that I work with you to design the patio um, so that it's specific to your life and then it, it works for you and your family. Can you see the difference on how that speaks to the person who may be potentially get a patio from you? Um, I think that's a mistake a lot of people make. Um, I love this stuff. Sorry, I, I start talking a lot about it. But um, just, you know, clearly define what it is you want them to do and then clearly define your ad and your ad copy and make sure the, the picture you, you, the picture or video you use speaks to the ad and sells the dream. It was a very nice picture of a patio the guy had. I was like, wow, that's a nice patio. But then it was just like, click, you know, call us for a patio. And it was just like kind of underwhelming. <laughs> so spend, spend more time on your ad instead of more money. I think you'll get better results. Thank you. Can I add to that, James? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I've been in the business since uh, 2011. So I, I very good presentation and excellent material. Oh, thank you, sir. Yeah. Um, the re one thing I wanted to add to Daisy's comment is you can run Facebook ads and spend all kinds of time and effort building a campaign. But if you don't have all the foundation pieces in place, meaning a good solid website, a way to capture leads, a lead capture uh, process, if you will, with autoresponders and also solid social media reviews responded to, you have to have your foundation in place before you could throw a party and invite people to your house. So that's the, you know, it's, it's really important to look at your whole digital campaign as opposed to just running the advertising would be like buying a lot with no house on it and sending out invitations. People will drive by and go, there's no house there. I'm not going to that party. So you have to have all the pieces in place. And James, I think you said that earlier, having, you know, good website, good social presence and all that. I just wanted to magnify that for days. Absolutely. Yeah. The, the ad, the advertising is half, half the battle. You know, the, the, the other half is, is making sure they're going somewhere that can get them to convert. I, I see ads all the time that run to broken websites. Right. Are you wondering why your ads aren't working well? <laughs> Cause your website's down. I have a question, James. Sure. James, can you hear me? Yep. Not, not everybody can uh, create the content that you're suggesting they would like to, but they might not be marketing people. Do you help them with that? Yeah, of course. Of course. And, you know, obviously anybody in the group, feel free to contact me, reach out. That'd be fantastic. Um, but uh, like I said, in that, in that free Facebook ads course, um, I literally go over like it's, it's, step by step. Um, you know, I mean, it's foolproof. I've been getting some really great feedback on it, but you know, you know, writing ad copy, um, you know, I'm, I, and I'm, I, I was not on the spaceship the other day, but I feel if I'm a human, I could do what most other humans do except have a baby. Um, although my, my appearance may suggest otherwise. Um, but I think any human could do what another human could do. And the, the most important part is training each other to do those things. So if you want to learn how to write that ad copy from this presentation, uh, that, that I showed you in that ad before, go, go check out my ads on the book.com course. I, it, it literally tells you uh, step by step how to write the ad copy. It tells you how to choose the picture or video. It shows you how to do the targeting. Um, you know, the reason why I created that course is because of COVID and everything that was going on. Um, I was on the phone constantly with people saying, I want, I know I need to do this. I know I need to do this, but I'm broke. I don't have a dime to my name. And, and I understand that this is, these are crazy, crazy times. So I put that course together so that they could literally just opt into the course and get emailed a checklist every day. Here's what you got to do. Follow the steps. It's almost like a color by number. And then you can have an ad. Now, 
am I guaranteeing success with it? No, because like I said, there's no right or wrong answer. There's only a, uh, you know, test and, and see your results. So that's why I always do two versions of an ad. Um, and you only swap out one thing, change out either the ad copy, use the same photo or use the same ad copy, use two different photos, but there's no right or wrong. There's only test. Um, but yeah, anybody can contact me if they want help, visit my site and then you'll see my ridiculous retargeting ads. Whatever James, I have do. a question. Sure. This is Dennis Richards, and I wanted to ask you about what would you think is the best way for us to learn about retargeting ads? Um, yeah, re retargeting is, is, is a bit more of an advanced, um, you know, uh, process. Um, yes. I, I, in, in my presentation, I think, you know, I, I, it, it's a little tough to, you know, I, I try and make it as easy as possible. Um, but honestly, you made just, it very clear. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, there's, there, there's, there's a slew of information out there. I mean, I personally, you know, YouTube learn by trial and error. Um, but I, I think when you understand if, if you're going to get involved with Facebook ads manager and, you know, like r the really advanced aspects of the platform, um, you know, uh, Facebook themselves has uh, the, the blueprint, I believe it's called, they have a great training on Facebook themselves. So you could actually learn Facebook marketing from Facebook um, or, you know, YouTube or any, anywhere else. I think um, once you understand that concept of, you know, if then, if they visited my site, but did not see this page, then I show them this ad. Um, then I think, uh, you know, you'll really, no matter where you do your retargeting on Google or Facebook, you'll see some pretty good uh, results. But Thank I would say, you. yeah, Facebook, YouTube, um, that's where I learned. You know, I definitely didn't make this stuff up. I just, you know, stayed up till three, four in the morning, uh, like a junkie, just loving this stuff. Yeah, James, yeah, quick, quick, question on um, retargeting. Where is the point of, you know, where does the, the benefit uh, start to decline? You know, where's the uh, cutoff? So do you, do you retarget for 10 days? Do you retarget 10 times? What, when, at what point do, is the law of diminishing returns kick in and it's, you, you, you need to stop? Sure, so you sure. You got to put a limit on it. Yeah, like I mentioned before that, you know, digital marketing can get a bit intrusive, right? So there's a thing, um, you know, called ad frequency. So if you're retargeting and, you know, like some of my ads, I put a lot of different graphics, a lot of different copies. So I test my ads out a bit longer, my own retargeting ads, um, because they're kind of goofy and people actually contact me and say, you know, your ads make me laugh every time I see them. And then eventually it turns into a phone call, right? But, um, you know, ad frequency is how many times somebody sees your ad. So once you start looking at the numbers of your ads, and if you start seeing ad frequency of, you know, upwards of five or 10 or, or whatnot, like, man, these people are seeing my ads several times a day, I am hitting them over the head with it, then it's just going to not work anymore, right? Um, the, the other, the good thing, though, is that retargeting is so much more affordable, that you know, it's, you know, if you watch your numbers, you can turn ads on and off. It's easy enough to swap out ads. I leave my retargeting campaigns, um, you know, always on. And then I just duplicate and change ads, change copy and all that stuff. So, you know, you're seeing a bunch of different versions of the ads. But basically, if you're not seeing any clicks back to your website, if you're not seeing any conversions from your retargeting ads, then they're just not working for you, you know, but, um, you know, it really comes down to the amount you're willing to spend and the results you're getting, you know, you just got to keep an eye on your numbers. Yeah. Like I said, there's, there's no right or wrong. There's only a test and, and, and see what your results are and make a decision. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I was really actually going to refer to the question that Chad Cookler had put in the group chat that said, how much time do you feel someone should spend on developing an ad? And what if you don't have a tangible product? You never charge us for a consult, so what type of offer can I use? Um, okay, so uh, so how much time uh, should you spend developing an ad? As much time as humanly possible. Um, I mean, you know, done is better than perfect, in my opinion. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think if, if you look at the, the core components, like I mentioned, just make sure you have that stuff in there. Make sure you have, uh, you know, a call to action. Make sure you have a, you know, great ad copy that speaks to the problem and how your product or solution, uh, how your product or service is the solution. Um, you, can, you, can get, you can get a Facebook ad going. Um, if you follow my course, okay, for example, it's four 10-minute videos. So is, is an hour too much time? You know, there's people who spend 50, 60, 70, 80 hours a week working, but they don't want to spend an hour making a Facebook ad for themselves. Okay, well then I, I can't help you there. But 
uh, in the least, you could spend an hour and make a great Facebook ad for yourself, in my opinion. Um, and then you could spend another hour making another great Facebook ad for yourself and see what the results are. Um, so you don't have to spend a lifetime making an ad. Um, I, I would say just get something out there sooner than later. But, you know, spend the time and really make sure. As far as uh, the offer, um, a free consult, right? So even me, you know, I, I have on my site a free strategy call. If, if I wanted more leads, if I wanted more work, right, I can put an offer out there that says, you know, um, get a free strategy call plus 50% off of your first project with us. Uh, free strategy call plus, you know, 25%, like, you know, a free strategy call isn't always a great offer because uh, an example, I don't know what business he's in, but like <clears throat> a lot of my contractors, I work with lots of contractors and that's one of their go-tos free consult, free consult. Well, guess what? If there's 20 paving contractors in front of me with a free consult, guess who stands out? The one who says, I'll give you a free consult plus 20% off your driveway. Which one are you going to speak to first? Right? that's the only way to stand out is by having an offer. So in my opinion, um, look at what everybody else is offering and make your offer better. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be money off. Maybe it can be, um, you know, get a free console plus also get my access to my free Facebook ads course. There's an offer, right? Um, or, or, you know, get a free consult plus get, um, you know, my free digital download, um, you know, how to save, you know, how not to get um, taken by a, by a driveway contractor, how to make sure you're making the right, the right questions to ask uh, this person when you're considering hiring them because now you're building trust, okay? If I'm going to hire a, a contractor for a $20,000 service and they say, I'll give you a free consult, plus I'll also tell you the exact questions you should ask me or any other contractor doing this job so that you know the right questions to ask, that develops a lot of trust in me, right? So I'm going to say, you know what? You're going to tell me, you're going to literally shine the light on behind the curtain and tell me which questions to ask, I'm going to, I'm going to contact, I'm going to, I'm going to get the information. I'm going to schedule the consult and I'm going to say, man, this guy told me, you know, in, in regards to um, uh, driveways, cause I work with lots of driveway contractors as well. My mother-in-law um, said, Oh, I'm going to get a driveway done. Right. So I referred to her several guys that I work with and I told her, ask them how thick they're laying the asphalt. Right. If it's, if it's under two inches, tell them to take a hike, okay? And then, then she said, oh, okay, that's great to know. And then I said, you know what? The next thing is ask them about the subgrade material. Are they using RCA? Are they using dirt? Okay. How long do they let the, the torn up driveway sit so that the weather can compact down the, the, the soil? She was like, this is incredible because there's guys out there that will say, I'll do your driveway in one day right? And then guess what? Two years from now, your driveway's crumbling and destroyed because it starts to settle. And so, these are the things you can offer in spot, instead of money off. Education, value, you know, like, like that, that alone, a, a $10,000, $15,000, $20,000 driveway, isn't it great to know those questions to ask so that you know you're not getting the one inch uh, of asphalt that in five years is going to have grass poking through it like crazy? Um, provide value, education. Sorry, I go a little long. <laughs> So, um, what is your opinion on Facebook when they say, do you want to boost this post? Since I've done that a few times, but I have found it very effective. But. Uh, I, 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 again, um, a lot of people say, oh, Facebook boosts don't work. It's a waste of money. Um, and I disagree. It's, it's, it's not that Facebook boosts are a waste of money. It's that the premise that you can post anything or everything and put a boost and win. That to me is a failed, you know, that's a failed promise. And I hate that Facebook does that because I see people, because now I constantly have to overcome that objection. Oh, I boosted 25 posts. I spent $2,000 and never got a single call. Yeah, well, guess what? The post you boosted probably stunk. You probably were that guy saying, I do patios. You know what I mean? Um, you can boost a post as long as you take the time. Please go, go, go sign up for my course. I will work with you to create the ad copy, then boost that post, okay? Um, make sure you're driving them somewhere that an action can happen and then you'll get that action, right? Uh, you know, I, I swear, I, the past 48 hours, I saw a Facebook ad. I click on them just because I'm like, let me see what this guy's doing. Let me see what this guy's doing. I clicked on an ad and the website was broken. 
Is, is he sitting there complaining, saying, ah, Facebook ads stink. They don't work. Your website doesn't even work, <laughs> you know? So Facebook boosts, um, you know, can work. Okay, they're not as, they're, obviously they're not advanced, you, you know, but they can work if you have all the components of a great post in place. Um, so I, I don't think they're losers. I think they could be real winners if you take the time to set them up properly. Okay, so Roberta is the last one because I don't want to hold you guys here late because it's 9.03. So Roberta, what was your question? So, can you hear me? I can. Okay. Um, what's the least amount of money one can spend on a Facebook post and what do you get for that? So our objective is just strictly to get people to our website as a nonprofit. That's our that's our goal. What's the least amount of money I could spend? Zero dollars. <laughs> you could spend <laughs> as you could spend as little or as much as you want. Um, but but again, I, I you know I hate to sound like a broken record. Um, it, you know you know you, your results are really important, right? You 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 know what what are your objectives? What are your expectations? If you're expecting to spend ten dollars and have five hundred people, you know, like get involved with your organization, that's not a realistic expectation. So when you do a Facebook ad, if you put $10 behind it, I always go by numbers. Okay. So, um, in example, um, let's say, let's say you do a Facebook ad. Okay. Or you boost a post or whatnot and you get 100 clicks. Okay. So, so that's your core, your core number, you know, run a post so that you get a hundred clicks. Now, when you get a hundred clicks, if you ran that post for three days, but you, you ran that post and all of a sudden you never get leads from your website, but then you get three leads within those three days. Well, that would be what a 3% conversion rate, right? A hundred people clicked to the website, three of them contacted you. So at that point, you know what to expect with your ad. So then you could just say, hey, you know, um, I spent, I had to spend $50. I got a hundred clicks to my website and three people contacted me. So at that point, you know, um, you know, let, let's say a hundred dollars and three people contacted you. It was a dollar per, per contact. So then you could just you know, uh, I'm sorry, it would be uh, $33 per contact, right? Um, three leads times 33 is $100. So you spent $100, you got three leads. Well, guess what? If you spend another $100, how many more leads do you think you're going to get? You know, probably three. Now you might want to say, well, how can I get more leads for that $100? You know, now you want to look at your, your page that you're sending them to and say, oh, you know, the contact form is on the bottom. Maybe I should have the contact form on the top. Or, you know, the, the contact form has 15 fields. Enter your name, email address, phone number, the name of your firstborn child. You know, what's your favorite color? You know, what day was yesterday? Then people are not going to fill out the form, you know. So you want to make sure that your landing page is optimized for the conversion, right? But at that point, once you've driven a hundred people to your site, if you drive a hundred people to your site and nobody contacts you, guess what? The ad is working. The ad drove the people to the page. The page is not working because nobody signed up. So you may want to look at the ad, uh, the, the, the web page copy and say, oh, I, I realize not a single spot on this page do I say contact us today to change the world, you know, or, or, or something like that, you know. So, you know, you don't have to spend too much, but you, you have to look at your numbers and, and create realistic expectations, in my opinion. Thank you. We thank you very much. Um, I took a whole bunch of notes. Me too. Knowing I will uh, use and, and take care of it. Um, for myself, I would need you to help me with the work because I'll never stay focused. <laughs> I'm sure you do that, right? Yeah, absolutely. Feel free to reach out. Anybody and everybody, feel free to reach out. Um, you know, like I said, uh, my, my, my free, uh, you know, my lead magnet, my free piece of value for you is either go to my website, get one of my checklists. I have a, I have a Facebook ads checklist, Google ads checklist, online reputation, get more five-star reviews checklist, website design checklist. Um, you can go get one of those checklists there, or you can visit adsonthebook.com today when we get off and go start your own Facebook ads for yourself with my video guidance. It's not just a overwhelming nightmare of, hey, download these 67 ebooks and you'll get going in seven months. No, this is a follow these four 10 minute videos and get going. So I, I just want to point out something when I had spoken to you all before and I said, um, you need to give people, uh, give them tips, do this and that. That's what will get you the business because there's a million people maybe not a million and not as great as James that do this, <laughs> but the ones, the one you're going to go to 
is the one that gave you the most. And that's just how it works, guys. Just how it works. So I want to thank you all. And James, uh, hopefully we'll see you again. And when I'll be back in New York. Uh, who knows? But I will see you then. Okay. Thank you so much, everybody. I hope that wasn't too overwhelming and I appreciate your time and stay safe. Uh, and yeah, thank you so much for your time. And thank you, Sheila, for having me. It was, uh, it was a lot of fun. I love this stuff. Thanks. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.